of exploring various types of sensors, displays or actuators. Now the electrical designs that I tend to do has a very typical structure. It has a microcontroller at the heart of it and there are different peripherals connected to the microcontroller. Now in order to communicate with the microcontroller to and fro to the peripheral, the, some of the common protocols that I have used are I2C, UART or SPI protocol. So for today's video, I want to focus on the SPI protocol or also known as SPI protocol, which is a serial communication. Now I've been building a LoRa GPS tracker. At the heart of it, it uses three peripherals connected to the microcontroller. The GPS module uses the UART protocol, but the LoRa radio module and the WaveShare e-ink module both use the SPI protocol. So even before integrating all of them with the single microcontroller, I have tested them individually and there was uh, no problem of any conflict. So I thought that if I integrate them, they will all probably work together. Well, I got into slight conflicts and that's exactly what I'm going to share with you and in the process learn about the properties of the SPI protocol. So let's jump right into it. The SPI protocol has four pins. The data in and data out pins exchange data between the microcontroller and the peripherals and then there are the clock pin and the chip select pin. Now the exact pin names may vary slightly and in fact there are some legacy pin names which are good to know as well because they are still being used in the older data sheets or technical references. So I recommend checking out the details of this resolution on the Open Source Hardware Association website. For easy reference you will get the list of new signal names, the deprecated signal names and also signal names unchanged that is the clock generated by the microcontroller. The electric IMP website shows a diagram of the SPI protocol. Now multiple sensors can share three signal lines. The first pin is the clock pin which is uh, generated by the microcontroller. The second pin is the data out of the controller and into the peripheral as denoted by the arrow. The third pin is the opposite data out of the peripheral or the sensor into the controller pins. And the fourth pin is the chip select or the C pin and it is a different one for each of the peripherals. So it seems like it's time to wire up the hardware and there are only three components to consider. The microcontroller is SAM D21G based on the Arduino Zero found on the Robodyne M0 mini dev board. The LoRa dev board is from Adafruit based on Semtex SX1276 or SX1231. It's based on the frequency basically. And finally the E ink module is from WaveShare. The one I'm using is 1.54 inch. So to start connecting the SPI pins, we need to locate the three pins that are commonly shared among all the peripherals. In the Robotine M0 mini dev board, the three pins are part of the ICSP header pins. Let's connect these three pins to the LoRa module. So the first one is data out of the controller and into the peripheral. The second one is data into the controller and out of the peripheral and the clock pin which generates the clock signal. Now the fourth pin, the chip select, is unique to each peripheral. For the LoRa module, pin D5 is used for LoRa chip select. Other than the four SPI pins, ensure that other related pins related to the sensor or the peripheral are also connected to the microcontroller. So here we have the LoRa reset pin which is connected to pin D6 and then we have LoRa G0 which is connected to pin D1 or uh, TX of the microcontroller. Now that the hardware is connected, we are all set to flash in the firmware. In terms of the firmware, Arduino has its own SPI native library. So the modules that I'm using for the e-ink and the LoRa, I'm basically using another firmware library, but 
it is still using the native spy library underneath. We will peek into the code to see how the spy pins are defined, how to enable the chip select pins, or even find out what are the frequency and the SPI modes. The Arduino native SPI library provides many functions to communicate with peripheral devices such as SPI settings, begin transaction, and end transaction. So let's look at the function SPI settings, and that takes in three parameters, which are the frequency of communication, data order, and SPI data mode. For the LoRa module, I'm using Arduino LoRa by Sandip Mystery on GitHub. When the program wants once to select this LoRa module, it needs to enable the chip select pin. Let's try to find this in the code by searching for the function transfer. Looks like we found a function called single transfer. So this function begins by pulling the chip select line low and ends by pulling it back to high. This toggling of the chip select pin is a feature of the SPI protocol. Next, let's hunt for other properties of SPI. A quick search on the SPI settings will lead to underscore SPI settings, which is a private function. After searching for this private function, the results show that the data order is MSV first and the SPI mode is zero. So what about LoRa default SPI frequency? What is it defined as? Well, a quick search will also give us the answer and it is 200 kilohertz. And what is SPI mode zero? This analog device website has a set of four graphs to visually explain these four SPI modes. For example, in the mode zero, three things should be noted. Number one, the clock signal should be low in the idle state. Number two, the clock polarity is zero. And number three, the data is received on the leading edge of the clock as denoted by the orange dotted line. So now that we have covered the SPI protocol, the properties and some basic features, we will flash in a very, very simple firmware into the microcontroller connect it with the logic analyzer right here, and then we will analyze the signals captured. Now the code that I will be flashing in is a slight variant of the example code found in the Arduino LoRa repository under the folder example LoRa duplex. At the start of the sketch, two external libraries are declared. First one is the native Arduino SPI library that we already saw, and the second one is the LoRa Arduino library or the firmware itself. After that, three related pins are declared and the first one is the chip select pin, which is D5 in the Arduino Zero framework. Next, let's run the make command and use Arduino CLI to flash the firmware. Looks like it is successful in uploading the code to the specific port and FQBN or fully qualified board name Arduino SAM DM0. Now in the logic analyzer, SPI protocol is chosen and it will be a time-based capture for about five seconds. All right, so looks like everything is ready. So why don't we capture the signals and uh, let's start the serial monitor first. Okay, so Laura is sending the packets and the logic analyzer is also capturing the signal and uh, looks like the capture has been completed. So let's zoom into the signals. Here we see a couple of things as confirmed by the firmware we saw earlier. So number one, the chip select pin is held low while the LoRa module is being used. And number two, the data is captured on the leading edge of the clock because we are using the SPI mode zero. So now comes the fun part, which is integrating both the SPI devices together, which are the LoRa and the e-ink modules. Now to use multiple SPI devices, this SparkFun article on SPI shows a clear diagram. The clock, the data in and data out lines denoted by the brown, green and blue lines are shared among all the peripherals. But a new chip select pin is required for individual peripheral as shown by the yellow lines. 
Just like the LoRa module, we will first connect the three common SPI pins to the e-ink module. The first pin is the clock. The second pin is data out of the microcontroller into the peripheral, but there is no need for the third pin, which is data out of the peripheral into the microcontroller because, you know, the display, which is e-ink in this place, does not have any data to send back to the microcontroller. The fourth SPI pin is not shared and it is the chip select pin, which we will connect to D10 of Arduino Zero. Now the SPI pins are settled, let's ensure other related pins are also connected. They are the e-ink reset pin connected to D8, then e-ink busy pin connected to pin D7 of Arduino Zero, and finally e-ink DC connected to D9 of Arduino Zero. Of course, we need to look at the WaveShare module to know how to connect these pins. And and finally, a quick electrical rules check after solving all the bugs that I had shows that everything is passing and it seems like we are ready to connect the real hardware. So as for the firmware, I'm using WaveShare's ePaper repository on GitHub, specifically the Arduino implementation of ePaper 1.54 inch example. Just like the LoRa module, let's search for the SPI settings function and see some properties of the SPI that this module uses. So it seems Seems like the frequency for this time is 2 megahertz. The data order is the same, which is MSB first, and the SPI mode is also the same, which is zero. So let's also check on the chip select pin by searching for SPI.transfer. And here we once again see that the chip select pin is held low just before transferring and turned on back to high after the transfer is complete. You know, this is what I love about working with uh, both the hardware side of things and the firmware because what we confirmed in the hardware can also be seen in the firmware. So now let's move on to connecting uh, the e-ink module only via the hardware uh, to this setup but the firmware will be exactly the same. So I connected uh, my, to my laptop and then started the serial monitor. And uh, yep, it says that LoRa in it has failed. Now upon further investigation, I found that if I only unplugged the clock pin of the e-ink module and start the serial monitor with the exact setup, the LoRa module is able to send the packet like normal, like nothing has happened, it's all working fine. So this kind of got me thinking that maybe it's something to do with the clock pin. Well, I couldn't be sure at first. And we know that both of the devices are using SPI mode zero for which in the idle state, the clock should be held low. So with this knowledge, I did a logic analyzer trace of only the clock signals from the microcontroller in channel zero of the logic analyzer, the LoRa clock in channel one, the e-ink clock in channel two, and finally the LoRa chip select in channel three. And here we see the result that the e-ink clock was being held high. Okay, so now we know what to do. In the idle state, the e-ink clock needs to be held low instead. So I added a pull-down resistor of about 1K ohms to the e-ink clock with no other changes in the firmware. So I restarted the serial monitor and the LoRa module is working fine again. Alright, so what a relief that I finally got the multiple SPI devices to work together and in the process I learned something about the SPI protocol and I hope you did too while I shared it. So I would love to know from all of you as well, have you used any SPI devices before and if yes, what challenges did you face with these devices? So I hope this little uh, practical example of using the LoRa radio module and the e-ink module with the firmware give you some insights about how to use SPI protocol and what to look out for them in the future. So thanks for watching and see you next time.